So today I'll be discussing how to cite Chinese sources in one's academic writing, particularly with reference to the uh, dissertations uh, in the Enfield Chinese at Trinity College Dublin, uh, but perhaps of interest to others. So I start uh, by talking about quotations in text. So short passages should be cited uh, inside the structure of your own paragraph, fitting the quotation uh, to your words as if it's written by a single person. That's better style than saying, as so-and-so says. So here's an example. There's no need for me uh, to read it out, but if you do, you'll see that uh, it reads just fine if you read the English frame sentence and then the quotation in brackets. And then I'll just point out some characteristics. The quotation starts and ends with quotation marks. Uh, the Chinese is presented first, then the English in square brackets, and the punctuation, the period for the sentence, if there is one, comes after the citation. Now, if you prefer, you could quote in English only, in which case you wouldn't have the square brackets, but uh, the Chinese then would need to be put in a footnote on the bottom of the same page. Under no circumstance do you just quote in English without giving the Chinese. You have to give uh, the original in Chinese. Now, what if you're citing a longer passage from Chinese over what would be three lines in the printed text? This you do without quotation marks in indented uh, paragraphs. So here's uh, just an example. You see we have the Chinese. Uh, then we have the English in square brackets, but there's no quotation marks. And then uh, the citation. And then you'll see that the uh, citation uh, comes after the final punctuation mark. Uh, so in short passages, final punctuation mark goes after the citation. And in uh, so-called block quotes, then the citation comes after the final punctuation mark. Now I turn to the bibliography and treat articles first. So the author's name should have the family name first, followed by the given name. The year of publication should be in parentheses, following the author name. The title of the article should be in Chinese characters, followed by pinyin and translation into English. The journal title should be Chinese characters, followed by pinyin. And the issue and page range should be included after the journal title. So let's look at some examples. We have Pan Wu Yun. So Pan is the last name. Wu Yun is the first name. Then we have uh, the Chinese characters and then Ho Yin Kao, uh, the pinyin for those Chinese characters. And then an English translation in brackets, uh, a study of gutturals. And then um, notice that uh, there are single quotes around the whole article title. And then the journal is put in italics. So if the journal were in English, you would put the, it in italics. Uh, and if the journal is in Chinese, then you put the pinyin in italics. Under no circumstance uh, do you italicize Chinese characters. So that's an important thing uh, to keep in mind. And then we have the issue, the number, and the pages. Uh, Minza Yuan is a, is a funny publication because uh, they don't have like a volume number. They just have the year. So uh, when citing Minza Yuan, which is the example I'm using here, you, you give 1997 as a kind of volume number, even though, of course, there haven't been uh, a thousand uh, volumes of Minzi Yuan. I give a uh, second example, but it's quite similar. So now we turn to books. So books, again, family name followed by given name. Uh, the year of publication noted in parentheses following the author's name. Then the book title, Chinese characters followed by pinyin and an accurate Chinese sorry, an accurate English translation. So book title, Chinese characters followed by pinyin and an accurate English translation, place of publication, and then the city in Chinese and the name of the publisher in Chinese. So here's an example. Uh, so we have Jin Peng. So Jin is his uh, surname, his, his family name, and then Peng, his uh, personal name, uh, 1958. Then we have the characters, then the title, uh, and this is in italics because it's a book title, yeah? Uh, and then uh, brackets with the title translated into English, uh, and you don't need to put the title into italics. Then Beijing, generally speaking, there's no need for Chinese characters in place names because it's called Beijing in English and in Chinese. 
uh, and then uh, the publisher in characters and in pinyin. So here, kushui chubanshu, and you don't need to translate that. There's no, it's not going to help anyone find the book if you translate it. That's the point. So don't translate the publisher's name. All right. So um, a few points about using pinyin. If you like to put tone accents on pinyin, that's fine. But then you have to do it consistently and correctly. And uh, don't ever put it on names because the, the names will be used in the text when you cite something. And then they need to match how they're given in the text and how they're given in the bibliography. So don't uh, put uh, tone accents on names. And as I said, there's no translation needed for publishers' names into English. Now, a note on traditional versus simplified uh, Chinese. Generally speaking, you should use in text and in bibliography what is actually used in the source that you're using. So use traditional characters if it's an old book or a Taiwanese book or article or from Hong Kong, for that matter. Use simplified characters for newer books or articles from the PRC. When citing historical sources or classical documents, always find versions that use traditional characters. So I think that's uh, an important point to make. It looks silly if you're writing in English and you cite Confucius or uh, something like that in uh, simplified characters. So always try it when citing old texts uh, to uh, cite them with traditional characters. And then a note on citing received classical texts. It's seen as good practice to default uh, to consulting the editions published by the Zhonghua Book Company. You might have a reason not to do that, you know, that you can't get your hands on it or that there's a particular version that's relevant for your argument. Uh, but as a default, try to try to cite things from uh, the editions published by the Zhonghua Book Company. And then also when uh, quoting from classical texts, don't translate them yourself unless you really need to or there's a particular reason to. Uh, instead, uh, default to using standard English translations. Uh, for example, Carlgren's translation of the Odes, uh, Lege's translation of the Analects. And if you uh, need to find out what the uh, standard English version of a particular Chinese text is, uh, you can look around a little bit. But if you can't find it, you can ask me for help. Now, a final note about citing works from languages other than English and Chinese. Uh, maybe you want to cite a French author or a German author or something from Russian. Uh, I would welcome that very much. Always cite the original source in the original language if you can. So, you know, if you, if you know Russian or German or French, uh, even if you don't know them well, you probably can cite the original source. If you don't know those languages at all, and especially if you're citing a very famous work uh, that is widely available in translation, uh, then it's fine to just uh, cite the translation without citing the original language. But when citing translations, always cite translations into English, not into Chinese. Uh, this is a problem that we run into quite a lot, that there's a French or a German classic author, I don't know, uh, maybe Emile Durkheim or Max Weber, uh, and people cite Chinese translations that then they translate into English. That's not good practice. Uh, either cite the original version, so French if it's a Durkheim, German if it's Weber, or cite a standard translation into English. If you find it helpful to consult a Chinese translation, uh, by all means do so, but there shouldn't be any need uh, to cite one, you know, except in really extraordinary circumstances, like if you're doing research into how uh, Durkheim has been translated into Chinese, for example. So those are various thoughts that I hope are helpful about uh, correctly using Chinese sources in your research.